It's a pleasure for me having this opportunity of talking before the youth, the future of the Muslim Ummah. I'm supposed to talk about a topic that's the importance of perseverance, patience, and being steadfast when we face oppression. So if you make this a little bit general aspects, that if we live in a society that always does not welcome an Islamic environment. So when I go outside, interact with the society, and find out that it's a little bit tough to practice, let's say, to wear the hijab, to maintain the halal and haram, or to say I'm Muslim, or to pray, or fasting and other stuff. And when the society does not welcome that, then I have a crisis. Now, how I can solve that? So that will be the center point of our topic. So I'll be going through a story in the Quran and we'll discuss a couple of lessons from that and try to connect that in our personal life when we face this kind of situation. This story is in 18th chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Kahf. There are a couple of stories that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala was describing in the Surah. The first of that is a story of seven people. There are difference of opinion, but most of the scholars agree they were seven in number. These people were Christian, so they were before Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were living in a time where the king and the kingdom that they were living in, they did not welcome freedom of religion. So that means, if you have a different religion than the religion of the king, then you will be executed. So it's not only a simple operation, it's the operation of death. That you cannot say that I have a different religion than the king's religion. So these people try to hide their belief completely so that nobody knows but they were not able to do that at a certain point it came out that they believed in one Allah one God and they were afraid of their life so then they planned to escape the situation what they did they choose a cave in a mountain outside of the city in a countryside and went there take a sleep their plan was that they will be there and will not interact with the people of the city and nobody will find them. And when they enter into the cave, they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that Allah take care of their problem. Then a miracle happened. The miracle was they got to sleep for 300 years. They find out that you are the only girl who does the hijab or you are the only boy who goes to pray and nobody else. Then after one day, two days, three days, and you find a little bit negative pressure to change your behavior because you identify yourself the extreme minority. Now these people was minority, extreme minority in that society, but they believed in Allah. So every time when you figure out that we are the extreme minority and you figure out there is a negative peer pressure, but you still believe in Allah. You can connect yourself to the people of cave, the honorable people of cave, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran. So you can connect yourself that you are doing the same thing. The same thing that will be honored to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then their second characteristics was when they have a conflict with Iman, the belief in Allah, and the operation in the dunya. They choose believing in Allah. They did not compromise. Because our deen has something that you can compromise, but our deen has something that is not compromisable. But believing in Allah, you can't compromise that. Praying five times a day, you can't compromise that. You have to fast in the Ramadan, you can't compromise that. You have to maintain halal and haram in food, you can't compromise that. You have to maintain halal and haram in dress and in relationship. You cannot compromise that. 
but you will find a huge pressure from your friends, from the people you live in, you go to the class, you go to the school, and you will find out sometimes that yes, it conflicts. Every time you go to buy a pizza, you find out that there is a conflict whether you will eat halal or haram. And when you get this conflict, if you do not compromise every time, you can connect yourself that your characteristics is very similar to that of the people of the cave. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor these people for these two characteristics that they were extreme minority in their belief they had a negative peer pressure but they did not compromise the basics of this thing so every time we do that in this society we can correct ourselves that we are very close to the rank of those people if our ikhlas is a standard okay so then I will go through a little bit follow up that how we can achieve that level of state fastness. What can help us to motivate when, when, we, when we encounter this type of environment? Excuse me. I'll go through two points. The first point will be philosophical, a little bit understanding of the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the sunnah by which he governed the spiritual and the physical universe and second will be some action plan so the philosophical point is that everything has an up and a down a up is followed by a down and a down is followed by up so when you find out that something is going in your life bad you are frustrated you are oppressed you did not like it but it happened just connect your mind, your psychology to this natural law that there is up and there is down. I'm giving two examples, one from Quran and one from Hadith. One Hadith is saying, this is a Sahih Hadith, that Rasulullah had a she camel and that was very fast running. And at that time, no other camel could beat that. So people were happy that Rasulullah had the camel and that always win the rank. One day, a Bedouin came with a very young camel. That is not a very old, very famous, it was a very young camel. And fortunately or unfortunately, that camel of the Bedouin beat the camel of Rasul And people are upset. Upset for two reasons. Some had an emotional thing, wow, this is the camel of Rasul that is unbeaten. Was emotional and other things it is really unbeaten what happened then they went to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasul smelled that there is something wrong then he made a statement he said if anything go up Allah make the down subhanallah that's the rule of the universe if anything go up that goes down then now come back to the Quran Surah Al-Inshira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, this is a very famous verse, you know, إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, every hardship is associated with an is. So that means if you go to the down, it will come up. So if you know that, this is a philosophical understanding, then your heart will be prepared every time you go up, that okay, there will be something down, this is part of the natural law. If you go down, don't be frustrated, there will be up. Allah will connect that to two is. If you have a hardship, there's no problem with that. So this is the natural law and, and we should be aware of that. And the second philosophical point is this up and down has a time scale. 